Hi, this is John Canalopoulos here from our center in Athens, Greece. Very exciting finding. I always like some of the simple things that we run into. This is a 22 year old uh, young lady. She actually happens to be the daughter of a very good friend of mine who has been diagnosed with uh, astigmatism. She's had glasses, she lost them, she wears them sometimes, she doesn't wear them sometimes. Let's go look at the corneas with sine fluke tomography, uh, Pentacam. It is evident that we have very significant astigmatism, 5.2 total diopters of astigmatism in this left eye. Uh, and remember the Pentacam measures anterior and posterior together, although here it reads cornea front, this is actually a total cornea. This is cornea back. And uh, as we've advocated, besides the angle kappa, the cornea thickness has a very smooth transition in circles from thick to thin. Thus, this is not keratoconus. It is also clearly evident here that the astigmatism is um, very symmetric. Again, anterior and posterior elevation are very neutral and naive in this young lady. We're gonna jump and look at her um, other eye, uh, which is uh, here. The right eye has even more astigmatism. We're at 5.6 diopters, total cornea astigmatism. Same uh, morphology. Again, this looks a little bit eccentric, but this is due to her angle kappa. She is uh, a whole half a millimeter off on the uh, X axis and just 40 microns on the Y axis. Remember, these are the angle kappa numbers for the pentacam. And again, an, uh, symmetry here uh, on the uh, satchel curvature map and anterior posterior curvature is fine. So why is it that this young lady in our refraction picks only 225 adapters of astigmatism from again, 5.6 total cornea. And with glasses, she corrects to 2025 plus, which is also her uncorrected visual acuity. This is the million dollar question. And I think the question will be answered if you look at her eyes. She has these really, really elongated and very thin eyelids. We can see here that she's tilted her face a little bit downwards and she is pinholing with the edge of her upper eyelid. Small pupils, the upper eyelid edge reaches almost to the pupillary uh, middle and she pinholes with the uh, fortunate for her anatomical structure that she has, they almost look like Asian eyes. Um, and uh, she's able to function this way. When in our exam, I pulled her eyelids open uh, and had her read the chart, her uncorrected visual acuity dropped from 2025 to 2050. Um, so again, um, some uh, hard uh, practical evidence on how um, some patients with, uh, with the rule of stigmatism, even at the age of 22, can function relatively well. Of course, we know that um, as she goes along and as she get, grows older, uh, perhaps she will uh, start uh, asking uh, for more of her uh, cylindrical correction. And again, the big dilemma here is if uh, this young lady or any uh, young patient uh, or any patient uh, at any age uh, for the same matter requests to have laser vision correction, we uh, in an instance like this will be, um, uh, uh, will be confronted with a big and difficult decision whether we're gonna TMR, meaning use a topography modified refraction or treat the manifest refraction that in this instance at this point have um, a tremendous difference. As I mentioned, 225 adapters of a cylinder on the manifest, 5.6 on the um, uh, Pentacam maps. I uh, hope uh, you found this uh, presentation interesting. Again, uh, a good example on the fact that the very high astigmatism has nothing to do with cornea thickness. It looks a little skewed due to angle kappa, but imagine if there was no angle kappa, everything here would have been concentric to the pupil, um, round changes of uh, cornea from thick uh, to thin, usually two colors, and these corneas are thicker than average to begin with, 550 on the right eye, 570 to the left eye. This is John Kilopoulos so from our center here in Athens, Greece, the Laser Vision Navigatory Surgery Center. Thanks so much for your attention.